Hey guys, it's Spack Daddy Doug here. Uh, today's video is gonna be a little bit different is I'm actually making a series here and I'm gonna be talking about unit splits. And I think this is really important because uh, there's been a lot of questions, there's a lot of activity on, really on two fronts is people asking, hey, how do I get into a SPAC very cheap? Additionally, there's also a movement here where you can actually flip, flip unit SPACs uh, over and over again and make a profit. Uh, Basically, uh, it depends also on how the market's been working. And I know anything probably in the last three months in the SPAC world, you could have cho chosen anything and made a good profit. But typically after a unit breaks, SPAC prices increase because the split breaks into commons and warrants. And depending on how much uh, people are interested in the SPAC, the stock price will typically go up a little bit. So, you know, you can make minimal gains, but um, in the long grand scheme of things, you can make a lot of money doing this. So in this series, I'm going to be talking about all the units that are going to be coming up. And this is um, very precedent in the sense that I have a list of 98 SPACs that are still in the unit phase that have not broken out to commons and warrants. And I'm sure that list will continue to grow. Um, and, you know, someone has to go through it. Someone has to know all this information. So what I'm doing when this in this um, series is I'm going to be going through each SPAC. Uh, going through it, just looking at the management team, looking at the background between the SPAC, have they had SPACs in the past? Um, it's a lot of digging, going through the S1s, to the 8K filings. But what's interesting is I'll be doing a SPAC Daddy Doug score. Um, and based on this information, I'm going to be reviewing the management team, past SPACs, region, industry, the niche, um, and coming up with a weighted average on my own score scoring system uh, to see if it's a good investment or a bad investment. Um, and, you know, I think in, as I go through the series, I might make some tweaks and adjustments to this, but um, I don't know what these numbers I came up with mean, but I think they're going to be good numbers. But what, in this, what I'm going to talk about in this video is I'm going to go through quickly. I'm not going to snooze you guys to death with the boring information, but just the highlighted information about the SPAC stock itself. Um, and hopefully this can lead to you guys to get into a SPAC unit uh, prior to it breaking up. Now, uh, the information I don't have is sometimes when you're looking at units, they do break up on their own. So you might be holding a unit and then you look at your in your account and next thing you know, you don't have any units. Units cease to exist and you have commons and warrants. Um, typically, any brokerage will do that break it break for you. If they're if you can buy units, they're going to do that break. So if you have a Robinhood account um, that doesn't trade warrants, uh, it's a good way to get warrants sometimes if they're trading the units. Um, additionally, uh, sometimes if they don't, a lot of times they don't break up themselves. But the unit price will typically follow the commons and warrants when you combine those numbers together. So let's get started. Um, and just a disclaimer, this is totally for entertainment purposes. Uh, please do your own due diligence. My SPAC Daddy Doug score that I'm giving here is just my uh, interpretation of the SPAC stock. It doesn't mean anything on the stock itself. Um, you know, And it's just kind of a good guidance and interesting to talk about. Uh, so let's get through these. I have five I'm going to go through today. Each one of these five are having their unit breakage, uh, are, break, are breaking apart at the end of this week. So uh, I think they're all on the 52nd day. So around January 22nd or 23rd, they'll probably be breaking up on the unit side. Um, sometimes these units, are, they're a little bit funny. They might break a couple days early or a couple days later, depending on various information I think none of us have control over. So the first one I'm going to talk about, ticker symbol TACA, Trapant Acquisition Corp. 1. Um, so I guess they're going to be having or planning to have multiple SPACs. Um, and uh, they're raising $232 million. The team is run by Aaron Serin. He's the former CEO of Vodafone. Director of Cisco Systems, Charles Schwab. Uh, Brent Saunders, previous CEO of Allergan. Actually, I've worked with Brett, <laughs> Brett in the past, a very long time ago when I started my career. Um, Ori Sasson. Um, and he's the Siebel Systems, Genesis Communications. To me, it looks like they're trying to uh, basically do some type of communications play here. Twenty, They're issuing $20 million in units. Um, the separation is expected on Thursday, January 21st. These guys do not have a target identified and they're leveraging experiences of their founders. They're, uh, they have a focus on software, communications, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, cloud, and security. Um, and the way the, spat, the way the units work is each unit is worth one common share and one half a warrant. Uh, currently, the price is $10.49. Um, to me, and then after 
Um, afterwards, the warrants are traded at a one-to-one value. So, um, and when you get the warrants, they will trade uh, for one warrant. It basically, pay eleven dollars fifty cents, and you'll get uh, one share. To me, this is an, I mean, from the ones I've reviewed, I'm just gonna tell you, even though it's the first one, this is a no-brain value buy. Um, this is a value buy just because of the price of ten dollars forty-nine cents. So, what I did is I gave gave this one a Spac Daddy uh, Spac Daddy Doug score. Um, the management team. Passbacks, region, industry, niche. Um, and I came up with a score of 6.25, and that's the Stack Daddy score for Taka. Let's get to number two, ticker symbol CAP, and I think their units are CAPU, Capital Investment Corp. Five. So this one's a little bit interesting. This is their fifth SPAC acquisition. Um, they're raising $345 million with 34.5 million units that are being issued. Um, not that these names matter, but Mark Ean and Dyson Dryden are the, are the guys who ran this SPAC. Their background is basically doing SPACs for the last 15 years. Raul Fernandez came on board. He's the, um, he's from uh, Sports and Entertainment, Tad Smith. He's a former CEO of Sotheby's too. So they are breaking apart around January 22nd. Um, and this one's a little bit interesting. This is their fifth SPAC offering. They have two US, this is what they say in their S1 filing, but they're only two, one of two that have closed four SPACs over $100 million. So they're trying to leverage their experience and their history of doing SPACs. And I could say that these guys have been in the game probably longer than anyone. Um, so they have four SPACs over 13 years. Um, and I'm going to quickly run through their previous SPACs, and I think that's the best way for anyone to judge who they are. So their first SPAC came at, it's still publicly traded, ticker symbol 2, TWO, $6.34. It came in in 2009. That's not that good, right? $6.34. But looking into it, uh, it's a REIT, -E it's a REIT um, for real estate investment. Um, I don't know much about this company itself, if they invest in, into retail or, you know, looking at the market and coronavirus, you can't really predict it. Um, say it was a failure because of that. We have to look at the history, but it looked like it did okay. Then in 2013, they did another SPAC called Capital Two with Lynn Bland Expedition. So, uh, looking just briefly at this company, they do a lot of expedition and travels. Uh, it was a $439 million SPAC. Currently, the ticker, uh, the price is $16.34. Um, it did show it had some value. And then 2015, they did a um, another one public uh, called Sision Public Relations Software Media Intelligence for 325 million dollars. The company actually went private uh, in January of 2020 with a valuation of 2.7 billion dollars. So they went in with 325 million final valuation, 2.75 billion dollars. And then their last SPAC, and this one is probably just kind of shows where they're at now. In 2019, Capital Four, a company called Nesco, they specialize in some type of specialty equipment for utilities and rentals and for telecom, $400 million SPAC, uh, current price is $7.35. Uh, so that wasn't really too successful. Um, looking at the current price for the units, $10.55. Uh, that will give you one, each unit will give you one share and one third unit. Um, afterwards, you need one warrant, there's a one to one warrant uh, translation, so each warrant um, will give you one common share after their IPO. Um, and I went through and I gave it a SPAC Daddy Doug score. My SPAC Daddy Doug score was 5.83. Okay, so that's my second one, a little bit less um, than the first one, Taka. Okay, the next SPAC we're going to go through. Number three, ticker symbol LOKB, Live Oak Acquisition Corp. 2. Um, and this one might ring a bell. This one is actually, I, I feel like this one is well under the radar in the sense of who they are and, you know, and their past SPAC performance. Um, so what they have, they're issuing 23 million um, units. Uh, they're raising $230 million with 23 million units at $10 per share. Um, they will be uh, on the 52nd day. So they're expected to probably to have their unit breakage around Thursday or Friday of this week. So the 22nd, 23rd. Um, and this one is one of the more interesting ones. I think the units are going to cease to exist and they're going to split. So if you own the units, you need to buy in probably multiples of three. And you have to be divisible by three to get all three of your units um, for every you know, for all your transactions. So the units look like they're going to be split probably at the end of this week. And then you look into your account and you're like, hey, I don't have the stock anymore, but I own commons and warrants. What's interesting is their target. They don't really give you a niche of who they're going to be targeting, but they say their target is the above industry growth 
free cash flow generation on their S1 filing. You're saying they say they're targeting a company between 500 million to 1.5 billion. Um, that's their S1 on their website. They say they're targeting two up to two billion dollars. And then if you look at their previous SPAC, uh, Live Oak, uh, they announced an iBusiness combination back in May 2020, and it just completed um, its. Uh, its merger at $28 per share. So this one shows to me that they do have a value in their past. Um, there's t um, I can talk about their management team. The management team to me is just a bunch of finance guys. These guys have a big background in mergers and acquisitions in the financial realm. Um, so these guys are just looking to flip over SPACs to me, it seems like. But the company, if you miss Live Oaks, you didn't hear about much of it. And if you follow you know, Facebook and Reddit and you know, Twitter and um, anywhere else about SPACs, but Danimer Scientific, so it's a high growth leading producer in biodegradable plastics, feedstock. Um, and then they close end of January, uh, end of December, so a few weeks ago, $28 per share. This units will give you one third a unit. So, um, and then warrants are trading um, for one to one afterwards. The current stock price is about 11, or current unit price is about $11. Um, you're paying a little bit of a premium here, but in addition, you're getting a company that, our management team that has shown they have, we're able to identify a target that has been very successful. Um, my Doug score here is a 6.66. Um, and this one's a little bit lower, even though they've had a, a very successful SPAC stock, is because of their lack of transparency here. Um, but I do think it's if I was if I was to buy this one, I would probably sell off the my common shares after I flip the units and then hold the warrants um, because you never know it could they could have a they could also find a lightning in a bottle a second time. Number four, ticker symbol HTPA Highland Transcend. Partners One, um, what they're targeting is an e-commerce, digital media and services, enterprise solutions, uh, enterprise software company. Um, they're raising $300 million and they probably have their units split around January 23rd. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm running these numbers based on when they started. So it could be a day before or maybe a couple days after. And I, I'm, you know, the S1 filings are never always direct. Um, so their proposed business is disruptive commerce, digital media and services, enterprise software. And there's, I found this very interesting. They said searching for a company, crisis of opportunity, crisis of commodity. Uh, commodity. Um, their management team here is, uh, they're co they're, the guy who's running it is the co-head of Goldman Sachs Investment Partners. Um, he's pushing on his his uh, experience. He's done a, a lot of investments in Spotify, Plaid, Food Panda. I think he names a ton of them. Uh, there's a few other guys on the management board. The founder of Lycos, if you don't know who Lycos is, is it was basically Google back in 1996. <laughs> um, and so... I, I guess I'll go into the stock units itself. The stock units right now are ten dollars ninety cents. Um, they're trading about so in each unit you get one third of a stock and one third of a warrant. Warrants will also be one to one. The Doug score here I gave it is four point one six, and that's the lowest that I've given so far. Uh, and the reason is because the management team has a lot of experience with investments. You know, they, they show that they, they're very knowledgeable to me. But I think what I'm seeing here is they don't have a they, – they're good with investments, but they have never brought a company public from what I've seen here. I could be missed something. But from what I've seen, they haven't brought a company public themselves. Um, so they need to really prove themselves to each other, uh, to us, to, to me, to be an investor here. But you know, it's still a relatively – inexpensive price um you're looking at uh 90 cents yeah so ten dollars per warrant is 90 cents yeah so three dollars i think it's a little bit priced out but i think there's probably better opportunity out there personally from what i'm saying you know others could think differently um this last one i'm going to be talking about is i'm actually probably most excited about Ticker symbol SPFR, Jaws Spitfire Acquisition Corp. Um, their focus is consumer tech and other tech. They're raising $250 million. Um, their unit split is around January 23rd, so that's Friday. Um, their prospect is North America. They're focusing on consumer tech, other tech, um, and it will come out of their network. So this one, these guys already have another SPAC out there, ticker symbol JAWS. It's J-A-W-S. Um, the guy who himself is basically, um, it's Barry St uh, 
Starlight. Um, and he's basically saying, hey, I'm using my own network to find something in the consumer goods. Um, and I'm not going to compete against my Starwood Industries business. So Starwood, you probably know the hotels. Apparently, they're also in oil, gas, infrastructure, real estate. Um, they're focusing on consumer goods. But what I really like about this is they brought in Serena Williams onto their board. So I think they're probably going to target something in, in the um, – in uh, sports, probably consumer tech, sports, who knows? Uh, but it, I find that very interesting who they brought on board, and I would definitely be, I de definitely keep an eye out on this one. This one could be a, a pretty good spec coming up in the future. Um, currently, the price is eleven dollars and thirty cents uh, for each for a unit, and each unit will give you one common share and one quarter one well, one quarter warrant so one out of one fourth warrant out of each one and to me that's a very high premium um, and I 30 cents is a pretty high premium to get into this SPAC stock um, however you are getting to a stock that has already a, a record um, the current the current SPAC is at $15 um, and additionally I, my rating right here is a 7.5 that's the Doug score for this one right here um, definitely a great management team uh, history track record uh, Serena Williams is on board. Uh, something is already in the works right here. Um, and it's just a matter of time before something's announced. But um, that's what I have right now. Um, I'm going to run through back through my SPAC, store, SPAC scores just to reiterate the overall. So TACA, ticker symbol T-A-C-A, -A, I give it a 6.25 Doug score. CAP, C-A-P, uh, 5.83 Doug score. L-O-K-B, a 6.66 Doug score. HTPA, a 4.16 Doug score. And SPFR, a 7.5 Doug score. Um, you know, if you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Um, this video itself takes a lot of research and time. I mean, to record a video, it takes me 15, 20 minutes, but then you know, I'm spending hours reading all these different types of SPACs that I probably would not be investing in, but I definitely learned a lot myself going through this exercise. But, um, you know, stay tuned, like, and subscribe for, uh, ver for number two coming out. And we'll be covering SPACs that are going to be units for next week. So until then, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.